Good morning, everybody. We welcome you to our first inaugural meeting of the Wastewater Stormwater Task Force uh, meeting. So thank you for, uh, very much for being here. Uh, before we begin, a couple of housekeeping items. One, a reminder to silence your cell phones or smartphones. Mayor Criticus asked us to remind you to silence your beepers as well. <laughs> That's how we're going to start on a Monday morning, so you know. Uh, also, uh, restrooms are located immediately out to your door and to the left. Uh, we are uh, very appreciative today of St. Petersburg College, the Seminole Campus, for hosting us. And I'd like to invite uh, our provost, Mark Strickland, to come up and uh, give us some welcoming remarks. Well, good morning, everyone. It's always a, a joy to host folks uh, to put forth an effort like this and, and have a task force use our facilities. Uh, we know at Seminole Campus we do this on a regular basis. We're very proud of our efforts. We're proud of the work that we do. And, and I understand this is the first of many meetings. So in the event that you all want to host again, we'll be happy to do so. So have a great meeting, everyone. Thank you. All right. As you know, we're here today to launch a collaborative effort among county, cities, and our agency partners to define and better understand our county-wide wa wastewater and storm issues. That's why we're so appreciative you're here. And before I go further, I do want to recognize uh, beyond our steering committee, who will be introduced in just a minute, we have in our audience uh, Vice Chair of the County Commission, Commissioner Janet Long, back here. And also, we're joined this morning, we appreciate her presence, Representative Kathleen Peters. Thank you for being here this morning. We're all very familiar with the impact severe weather has on the complex network of city, county, and private sewer systems here in Pinellas County. It brings an immediate need to the more comprehensively review and evaluate our infrastructure. That is, the parts and equipment that transport, hold, and provide treatment to our stormwater and wastewater. The Wastewater Stormwater Task Force is expected to create long-term, comprehensive solutions for stormwater and groundwater infiltration issues, as well as identify the potential need for increased countywide system capacity. Capacity is directly impacted by the amount of stormwater and groundwater that seep or leak into our system. As we know, this is an especially uh, issue uh, during heavy rain events when systems are hit with enormous amounts of excess water at any one given time. Together, we will help solve the continuity, uh, the continuing sanitary sewer system concerns throughout the county and create sustainable goals and courses of action into the future. Today, I, uh, this week, we recommended the following composition of our task force, which includes county, 17 municipal leaders and 10 agency leaders. And you'll see the names on the board. And again, we're gonna give, in just a little bit, we're gonna give an opportunity for each of our task force members to, uh, to greet us. But we feel that working as partners is the most efficient use of our resources. It's also a realistic approach in addressing the pressing needs for solutions. All the while taking into consideration the many other responsibilities each of us holds in serving our citizens. I'm sure that the respective, respective technical working group representatives will be communicating regularly with their county, municipal, and agency counterparts to form a plan of action for improving the management of wastewater systems and alleviating emergency situations countywide. We will, in fact, let's, if you're in the technical working group and you're in the audience, would you stand to be recognized as well? We thank you for taking time to be with us this morning and appreciate the good work that you will be doing in the future. We will facilitate more beneficial outcomes through greater collaboration, closer communication, and mutual support. Working together as partners, we can do more and we can better solve the key wastewater system issues for which we're challenged. We will turn our challenges into opportunities and identify solutions to better serve our residents. Today, we are laying the groundwork towards short-term and long-term plans of action that will lead us to improving the countywide management of stormwater and water flows in the sanitary sewer systems, especially, again, during those heavy rain events. Next, you'll see a map of our county, city, and private sewer systems. Our network of sewer systems serves 306,495 customer accounts, significantly smaller than our population because it reflects households, businesses, not the actual number of residents. Of this complex network of 15 public systems and three main private systems, you'll notice that there are only nine wastewater treatment plants that together have a total capacity of treating 115 million gallons of water per day. Some cities work independently by maintaining their own wastewater, sewer collection, and treatment systems. But although not immediately visible to customers, many cities and the county 
operate interdependently to convey wastewater from one part of the system to treatment systems outside of the respective jurisdictions. When we talk about stormwater, our watersheds clearly come to mind. A watershed is an area of land over which water flows. Every square foot of, our, of land in our county is a watershed. Watersheds do not follow jurisdictional boundaries. For example, stormwater runoff generated in an unincorporated area of the county could end up in Largo or Pinellas Park and vice versa. In our county, we have a total of 56 watersheds that flow into five major bay areas, three major lakes, one major river, all essentially leading to the Gulf of Mexico. Our common goal is to protect the public from flooding and improve the quality and management of our surface waters in line with state and federal requirements. As we mentioned earlier, a key component is that we take a closer look at flooding on the surface in high water table conditions that can cause inflow and infiltration. Inflow is stormwater that enters in sanitary sewer systems at points of direct connection to the systems. Infiltration is groundwater that enters sanitary systems through cracks or leaks in the sanitary pipes. By addressing the flooding issues, there will be less of an impact to our sewer capacity. Our common challenges we face as a community include the capacity, aging systems, equipment breakdown, illicit connections, inflow and infiltration, and identifying boundaries. Our wastewater storage tanks must be able to handle peak flows as well as impacts of flooding events. Our aging systems and pipes need to be lined or replaced, and we're able where repairs must be performed to prevent sewer backups of inflow or groundwater into the system. We need to eliminate illicit stormwater connections into our systems. We need to look at reducing inflow and infiltration, starting with the areas that receive the highest localized flooding. Two of the biggest challenges we face are identifying jurisdictional boundaries among utilities and sewer pipes and our need to coordinate our stormwater management efforts. Today we set forth some goals and opportunities. Our focus is based on three guiding principles. Avoid and mitigate spills, overflows, and releases of sewage into the environment, particularly our water bodies. Increase the capacity and resiliency of our collective sewer system and wastewater treatment infrastructure. And to seek opportunities to address drainage and stormwater issues that impact that sewer system. Together, we must prioritize solutions to provide the most benefits to our citizens and our community. By improving these areas and looking at our overall infrastructure, we will contribute to the greater good of our community. In the areas of public health and safety, water quality, climate resiliency, economic vitality, wildlife habitat, air quality, and our environment. So today you've heard the, call, the framework, the ideas, and the goals. Now we want to hear from each of you, starting with our steering committee members. So what I'd like to do is ask each of our steering committee uh, members to come forward to the podium, introduce themselves, and then just take a minute or so and summarize the outcomes that you'd like to see from our task force, as well as what you'd like to contrib uh, contribute, including any technical support. And so we will start, why don't we start uh, on this end of the audience? We'll let you come forward, introduce yourself, and you have about a minute. Um, good morning, my name is Deborah Schechner. I am the mayor of St. P. Beach, and we have um, unique problems in our beach because right now, we cannot add one more toilet to our system. I'll let that sink in for a moment. We cannot add one more toilet to our system. We have a park, and this year we plan to put two bathrooms in there. Those plans were canceled. Our sewer system has recently been cleaned and between two manholes, we collected 12 tons of debris. I had to go home and look at 12 tons in a Google search because I had no idea what 12 tons actually looked like. Our system has been neglected for such a long time. We are now you know, taking action, but to repair and line takes money. And we budget as much as we can each year, and perhaps as a whole county, and perhaps with the state, we can all garner some money grants or otherwise so that we can all fix our systems and especially down where we are. Um, we've had flooding in some of the storms due to the fact that our sewer system could not take any more. Our public works department did an incredible job working 24-7 pumping sewer systems, sewer lines, and putting it into um, our pump stations and, and other areas. So we did a great job the last time, but who knows what will happen the next time. Thank you very much.
Good morning. I'm Terry Hamilton Wallen. I'm the Vice Mayor of Indian Rocks Beach, but I'm also the President of the Barrier Islands Governmental Council, known as the Big C. I'm happy to say that during our last flooding event, our streets did flood, but our sewer didn't have any complaints whatsoever. I'm also happy to say that we sold it to the county two years ago. And it was in excellent condition then, and I'm sure it's in, the, in an excellent condition now. But as Deborah said, if it, if it affects one of our cities, it affects all of us. This is environmentally something that we have to deal with. We have to deal with it immediately as best we can. And I thank all of you for being interested and in turning out today to help us do that. Good morning. I'm Max Elson, the mayor of South Pasadena. I'm happy to report that uh, we have no sewer problems in South Pasadena. We do have street flooding, as everybody, but uh, through some good foresight a few years ago with uh, our public works department and previous administration, we have totally slip-lined, completely finished slip-lining all of our sewer systems. So. Everything's in pretty good shape. However, we do use the city of St. Petersburg. We do not have our own treatment plant. Everything is, uh, is pumped to them. So it's very, very much a concern to us to see that uh, this problem gets solved. Thank you very much. I'm George Crudicus from the city of Clearwater, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for calling this forum together and to the County Commission for helping us realize that the problems that we have as a community affect all of us. But having said that, I'm going to take a little different tack than my colleagues because the city of Clearwater frequently gets criticized because its stormwater rates and sewer rates are higher than other communities. We do that on purpose. We do it to take care of a core responsibility that we have, and that's our infrastructure. And so before we as a group decide to go to Tallahassee or Washington to say that help us because we're not doing our job, we in the city of Clearwater are going to say help us because we've done our job. And that, I think, is a message that cannot be lost while this technical committee looks at answers that impact all of us. If you're going to help those who didn't raise their taxes to pay for storm water and, and sewage, then help us who have and give our ratepayers a chance to have that same benefit. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, Sandra Bradbury, Mayor of the City of Pinellas Park. I think that we need to work as a group, hopefully, to be able to, as a whole, have all of our citizens have the benefit of the stormwater retention, as well as our sewer system. Uh, my staff is here as well, and the Public Works Department in the City of Pinellas Park, along with Pinellas Park Water Management District, has done a wonderful job to make sure that our city has upheld over the last few storms that we've had in here. Thank you. Good morning, my name is uh, Jim Quinn. I'm vice mayor of the city of Seminole. City of Seminole had no street flooding uh, this storm or any other storm. But we don't have our own treatment plant, we rely on another treatment plan to take care of us, our uh, problems, our wastewater. Uh, I'm an old public works guy. Probably 35, 40 years ago, I was in public works up in New England. We had our own treatment plant up there. Uh, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to comprehend that uh, the city that handles ours that normally would handle 23 million gallons a day of wastewater, and during this rain activity, it had to handle 115 million gallons a day. There has to be infiltration somewhere. And just learning, I just learned today that something I forgot about. We have manholes in our streets. Those manholes are not sealed for a reason. 
So when the street gets flooded, the rainwater goes down the manhole. Two things happen when all that rainwater comes in. Number one, it stops the process of the wastewater treatment plant. It kills the enzymes that work on the sewer treatment that comes in. And number two, all that happens is it just flushes it out. It just keeps flushing it out. When the rainwater goes down the manholes that are not sealed, when the pipe gets filled up, the water starts backing up, comes out of the manholes, and puts wastewater on the streets. It's a big problem. A lot of it has to do with are we, are we not, are all of our storm systems disconnected from our sewer lines? It, uh, 30 years ago, we had sewer lines still connected to our sewer lines up in Enfield, Connecticut. And I, I believe, I still believe, that there are stormwater lines hooked up to our sewer systems in some of the cities. So that's a problem that has to be correct and corrected. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Commissioner John Carroll from the City of Largo. I'm here representing Mayor Brown and the citizens of Largo. I'm happy to have our Environmental Services Director here as well. Um, I'm happy to be here um, working with the other communities in Pinellas County. As you may or may not know, Largo has been operating under a consent order from some, for some time to fix some issues with wastewater and uh, stormwater, and we've made great progress, but we still have a ways to go. Um, as a retired police chief, I understand that this is one of the services government provides that people can take for granted until something goes wrong with it. And recently with um, rain events and so forth, things have gone wrong with this. So happy to he be here to work together and fix this problem. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jim O'Reilly. I'm the city manager of the city of Gulfport. Um, City of Gulfport, we, recently we've comp completed a sewer system evaluation study, um, evaluating our whole system to see where we need to go. Uh, we've committed to re state revolving loan funds. My city council, council member Yolanda Romans here this morning, has taken this very seriously. How we approach our partnership with the city of St. Petersburg is so important, as that we're a customer of them. And they, as we do on the south end of the county, have a long-standing issue with aging infrastructure. It's not unique. As council member, or excuse me, Mayor Critico spoke of, the issue is a hometown issue. We talk about home rule. This is something that we each have to deal with. And I know that Mayor Critico deals with it in a certain manner. I know Mayor Kreisman is dealing with the issue. I can speak for the city of Gulfport. We are taking the steps to necessary to seal and slip line and perform necessary repairs to our infrastructure. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first off, thank you, uh, Chair Justice, for calling this task force, along with Vice Chair um, Janet Long. Appreciate y'all's involvement in this. Uh, <clears throat> St. Petersburg uh, services not only our own wastewater, but we also service five other communities. And so when we look at this issue, we look at it not only is it our issue, but it is uh, really a countywide issue that all of us are dealing with. Um, and our challenges are all very similar, I think. We all have issues with capacity uh, and inflow and intrusion, uh, which is with our pipes, our manholes, uh, and our private laterals. And that perhaps in some ways is one of our most challenging issues because it is on private property and it's not something that we have direct control over. Um, uh, Chair Justice also mentioned stormwater. Uh, and a lot of times when we're talking about uh, our sewer system, we forget about the impact of uh, dealing with our stormwater system. So in St. Petersburg, uh, we over the next five years have $230 million uh, budgeted for water resources to start addressing our capacity issues and our, our I, I issues. We are engaging in a, a study, um, a master plan for our stormwater system because we know that we have got to address our stormwater system if we also want to have an impact uh, on our challenges with capacity. What I'd like to see happen from this task force is I think there are always opportunities for us to improve communication. I know we are in St. Peter certainly reevaluating how we have handled communication throughout uh, these three um, uh, state of emergencies that have been declared. I think there are opportunities, even though our systems aren't connected, for us to, to look for ways of collaborating. Uh, if someone has some excess capacity, maybe there's some way of us utilizing that capacity during a storm. 
Certainly, I think we all need to be unified in our funding requests, and, and uh, we are talking a lot about uh, trying to create some kind of a rebate fund for private homeowners who have to do work on their laterals. Uh, and lastly, I think it's important that we ensure that any actions that each of us individually take don't negatively impact our neighbors. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Alacuz. I'm the mayor of the city of Tarpa Springs. Chairman, I want to thank you for organizing this meeting today. The city of Tarpa Springs is the oldest city in Pinellas County, as you know, but we're doing a very good job maintaining the, uh, the system that we have, and we're very thankful to our employees for doing an exceptional job. But what I'd like to see from this meeting is to have to, uh, to establish some kind of a cooperation where we can exchange uh, technical support equipment from one city to another, and if it is a way that we can interconnect the systems, so if we have an overflow, that it can actually, other system will be able to support that. So that's the things that I'm looking for today, and thank you. Good morning, I'm State Senator Jeff Brandis. I think by the comments today, you realize that every city is unique. Everyone has their e unique set of challenges, and so what I hope to, to come out of this with is, uh, is a discussion about how, as a state, we best address individual communities' unique set of challenges. Obviously, the challenges of Tarpon Springs and St. Pete Beach are extremely different, and their populations are very different, and their ability to, 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 um, to repair the systems in a timely manner um, will be different. Also, we have the 2014 measure passed by the citizens of the state of Florida called Amendment 1. And I think that amendment anticipated that there would be an opportunity to, to enhance some of these systems. And so hopefully the task force will come together with a proposal that might look to Amendment 1 dollars to help address some of the challenges that they're facing. So with that, thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Amy Foster, I'm the chair of the St. Petersburg City Council, and Mayor Kreisman did a great job of outlining some of our challenges and some of the solutions for moving forward, including that $230 million investment, which I think um, will likely grow over the next couple of years as we identify other solutions. I just wanna say, uh, first off, thank you to the men and women in the uh, technical rows, you really are our unsung heroes that every day you and your teams are protecting health and safety for our communities. And I think that often gets lost until we have a crisis like we are currently facing. And so I'm really here to listen to you and hear possible solutions that we can allocate funds for, uh, as well as look at a regional approach for solutions and possible community-wide policy solutions that the City of St. Petersburg, our county, and others can work together on. So thanks for being here. We have a room full of politicians, and we actually took less time than we expected for that, so thank you very much. We now look to our next steps. Uh, the task force will facilitate easy and prompt access to updates, milestones, issues, and outcomes. We look to our technical working group to meet at least bi-monthly for open conversation and discussion on what each member is implementing or proposes. The end goal is to have an initial action plan within the next 90 days. This initiative we begin today will provide more effective solutions and hopefully greatly improve the quality of life for our citizens while strengthening Pinellas County as a whole for the future. So uh, because we are a little ahead of schedule, I'm gonna go off script here a little bit and see, I know we have uh, uh, Representative Peters, Commissioner Long, and Councilwoman Roman in the audience, and uh, I would invite them, if they have a, want to have a minute to come up and address the audience, I would give that to them as well. As the commissioner indicated, Yolanda Roman, City Council, City Golf Port, and uh, Jim Morales, City Manager, did a great job as well explaining. Um, we've taken about the last year and have a lot more work to do to work on our sewer systems. I've taken it upon myself to do PowerPoints and briefings for our community. Obviously, we want everything done overnight. It's not going to happen. Um, I do have a couple of proposals, I think, that uh, I'm going to put forward. 
Um, I've seen some cities do vac trucks and tanker trucks, and I'm also very interested in a lot of research on what ladder improvement re rebate programs look like around the country. There's one unique one here in Florida. There's a lot in California. So, but I'm looking forward to a lot of initiatives that come from this group to be able to translate that to our community and seek solutions along with you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Commissioner Janet Long, Vice Chair of our Commission this year. And I'd like to put forth an idea that uh, models some other areas in our state that seem to be pretty effective. So just as a consideration, let's look, for example, at the model for how we treat our garbage in Pinellas County. All the various municipalities have their own vendors that pick up all their garbage, but they bring it to our county-wide waste treatment utility. And with our water, another issue that impacts all of Pinellas County. We have Tampa Bay Water, which is made up of member memberships and communities, and all of our water resources come through Tampa Bay Water. So why wouldn't we think about having a county-wide stormwater management and sewer system utility so that with all these different sewer systems, we have a way to interconnect and coordinate them and look at the county as one whole unique and very special paradise. So I don't know how that uh, idea goes with our technical people that are here, but it does seem to me to make good common sense. Thank you. Good morning. I am really glad to see this task force has been created, and uh, I wish you all a great deal of luck in your quest. Um, and I'd love to be apprised of the outcomes that um, you come up with. Um, I also want to invite you to come to our next delegation meeting because I've invited some. I've invited somebody who I think would be considered an expert in this area, um, and he's looked at many systems all over the country. And uh, he's looking at things more than private lateral lines. And based on the information I've gotten from his book and from other cities that have done um, what he's recommending, we've seen significant um, reduction in intrusion. So when you look at whatever solution you're coming up with, um, please look at the entire system. Um, what he has found is cleanup valves um, are more of a culprit than private lateral lines. So um, anyways, I do encourage you to come to our delegation meeting, hear what this gentleman has to say. I think you'll find it very interesting and helpful. Um, and I look forward to the outcome of, of this in the end and that we have a county-wide system that truly is looking out for our basic needs of our citizens because you all have heard me say it before that um, communities cannot thrive and grow if we do not have a clean, healthy sewer system, a good, healthy, clean, potable water system, and if people live in fear, they, communities cannot grow and thrive. So our public safety systems, these are all basic needs that we can never neglect. Thank you, and good luck. The initial uh, uh, objective of this meeting was, uh, has really, uh, you've seen it already. Uh, it was to get to all of us in the same room, uh, introduce some of the folks that maybe don't know each other, uh, get them a chance to meet each other in person and pr lay the groundwork for the work of the technical committee to come back with uh, proposals, ideas uh, to the steering group, which would then have to obviously work with our 24 municipalities and our county commission uh, as far as any actual imp implementation of the ideas that come out of this task force. Uh, the technical workers uh, uh, work group I hope you've heard from policymakers, kind of where our mindset is, the idea of how can we better collaborate, whether that is communication and operations, or whether there is physical uh, utility, uh, actual collaboration and connection. Uh, but we look to you for your guidance over the time. Uh, we heard about uh, meetings being open. I want you to know that every meeting of, the, of all committees involved in this will be open and accessible to the public. Uh, where possible, they will be recorded and, and placed on our website. We will have uh, all documents from all meetings on the county website as well and accessible for the public. 
Uh, that concludes this meeting of our steering committee. Our county staff will be connect, uh, communicating with the members of the technical work group to uh, set a first time, trying to find the best opportunity and, and location, all of that. And uh, we'll look forward to the work product uh, in the first discussions. But again, the better way that we can collaborate to serve our citizens is what our taxpayers want to see. Uh, nothing is more frustrating for a taxpayer to see uh, government A and government B not communicating, not talking to each other, and not trying to figure out how we can better serve each other. And then when we become unified in a goal and a purpose, uh, then we will be in a wonderful shape to go to Tallahassee or go to Washington to seek assistance from them as well. They will look for us to be organized and unified when we make that, uh, make that trek. So again, thank you very much for everything that you're doing, everything that you will do, and we certainly appreciate your presence this morning. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.